So in this short film, we're going to talk about the stove and about food and a little bit about water. So during your expedition, you are going to uh, obviously need to eat, you need to drink and look after yourselves. Think about drinking water first. We need to be drinking around two litres of water a day. Make sure you bring a proper water bottle with you. Something that if you dropped it, it's not going to just uh, explode and all the water is going to um, spill out. So a proper water bottle. We often see our pupils bringing along just a, a disposable bottle that they would buy in a supermarket and that's just not enough. We will provide you with additional water purification tablets. These purification tablets allow you to um, clean the water that you get from mountain streams. In most of the areas where we do expeditions at bronze and silver, we wouldn't recommend that you drink water straight out of a stream. We would ask you to fill your bottle at the stream and then pop your water purification tablet in. It takes around 20 minutes for the water to be purified. And then after that, it's safe to drink. When it comes to food, we would ask you to um, check the information that we've put on Firefly about nutrition and about camp food. It's very clear that we shouldn't see any jars, bottles, tins, anything like that that's going to uh, potentially break or cause you to cut yourselves. They're also very heavy. We want you to have dehydrated food so that it's lightweight and easy to carry. We're very keen that you would put your food you can, uh, you can pop it into these handy Ziploc bags. So if you're planning to bring pasta, rather than bringing a big bag of pasta where you might not need it all, you can decamp some into a, a bag and bring that along. There are a number of food products that we see on DOV that are not suitable, yet they continue to appear on the menu. Pot noodles. Pot noodles have no nutritional value and they don't have enough calories in them. We would expect you to need around 3,000 calories per day on expedition. So we need you to bring food which is going to provide you with long-term energy. And the pot noodles and things like that, they just don't give you that energy. There are some great uh, track bars, uh, muesli bars. You can make your own um, and bring them along, put them in a Ziploc bag. You now know enough about nutrition from the work that you do in school and certainly from the information that's available online to make good decisions about food. If you're not sure, practice at home first. Come up with a menu and have a go. You can cook with your friends, you can cook on your own. It's obviously quicker if you all cook together. For cooking, you're going to use a stove. So in the evening, we would expect you to cook food for yourselves. Lunch is always a cold lunch. We wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't have time to set the stove up and cook at lunchtime. But certainly in the evening, we want you to use this stove. It's called a Trangia stove. The Trangia stove <coughs> is very easy to put together if you follow these instructions. First of all, take off the strap that goes round it. Now we lose these all the time, so please make sure that you tuck that into your pocket so that it doesn't go missing or fly away. So that's nice and safe. The Trangia stove comes in sections. We're going to build it up so that we can cook some food. The bottom of the stove is this bit with the holes in it and it's placed first on the ground. Once you've got that safe, then it should be about three metres from the tent. You can get the little burner out, which is where your heat's going to come from. This burner is going to be filled with meths, which is in this bottle here. So that's what the burner looks like. It slots in here. The lid can just be kept to the side. You'll notice that this is the, um, the second part of the stove has these little notches. These correspond to the notches here on the base. It allows you to place the top over the base and when you turn it round, obviously, it secures the stove. Makes it a lot more stable. The pans, use the handle please, make sure that you use the handle. The pans are just placed over the heat once you've got it on 
and it's much more efficient if you put the lid on. It just cooks a lot quicker. Lighting the stove. First of all, you're going to want to get your meths in here. Meths is highly flammable. This is a dangerous product. So please follow these steps. Loosen the cap and then you can see that it presses down. That opens a valve inside that allows the meths to come out. Press down and pour. You pour about three quarters full and then let go, let it drip out and then tighten it up again. It's essential that you tighten it up. Never pour meths into the burner when the burner has a flame on it. You might think, oh, it's going to go out in a second, I'll just pop some meths in to stop it going out. If you do that, what you'll find is a track of flames will come from the meths up into the bottle and this will explode. So you only fill this when it's cold and it's empty and there's no flame. Put that a good distance away from your cooking area. Well, you can pop the, the, set, the uh, other section on and you can get your matches. And in a plastic bag, matches good, are good in a plastic bag because obviously as your day goes on they might get a bit soggy. So all you do is strike the match and put it right in to the meths. Okay, now that little match touched the meths there, that's fine. And as I put my hand over the top here, I can feel the heat. The meths flame to start with is invisible, you can't see it but it is there and I can feel the heat of it on my hand. Now I'm ready to start cooking so I can get my food prepared, I can put my pan on etc. When we're finished cooking for the day I can have got two options. If I think I'm going to use this uh, again later in the evening I'll just pop one of the lids on. That will extinguish the flame. If my plan is to um, put my stove away and I'm going to carry on, so it might be at breakfast time, we would like you to let the meths burn dry into the chamber, into the, the little burner. Otherwise, the meths will seep out and you'll have a meths smelling rucksack. So make sure that the meths is burned out if you're not going to use it again. So just to summarise, when you're using a stove, make sure you put it together properly so it's nice and stable. When you pour the meths in, be careful that you don't spill it anywhere else and that you never refill the chamber when it's hot or already lit. It must be cold and empty before you refill it. When you're finished cooking, make sure that you let the flame burn out. Make sure your stove is a good distance away because if you kick this over and it hits your tent then the tent will go up in flames. We're going to pop this away now so all we do is we take it apart. Um, I'm going to pop my um, meth to the side because uh, there's still some meth in there. Turn this upside down and then you just repack it the way that it came out and just start popping all of your pans in and the lid goes on. All of these bits will go inside and you get your strap and it feeds in the holes that you took it out. Make sure that you give them a really good clean. We expect these to come back spotlessly clean so the next expedition group will be able to use them. When it comes to um, using stuff for eating, obviously a spork is a great idea and lightweight uh, plastic bowls. These are all very cheap from outdoor stores. Thank you.